Hey guys, Mr. Farmer here again. Today, chapter 26, sectional views. This is one of my favorite topics. Uh, I love doing sectional views because they show a lot of detail uh, and you can learn a lot about a part or a product from a good sectional view. So uh, this is another topic that we've covered way earlier in the year when you were sketching by hand. Um, I'm not sure if you remember or not, but it might be a good idea to grab those old engineering notebooks and take a look at your sectional views that we did. Uh, just jog your memory about what it is. Just as a refresher, uh, sectional view is is when you um, when you show the interior of a, of an object, right? So so a couple of good examples here. You've probably seen this maybe in your science class or something, but if you've ever seen like a picture of the Earth and it's it's cut away so you can see the different layers, right? Something like that. That is uh, a sectional view. Um, that's a quarter section view. A quarter section is removed. Um, that's a good example of a sectional view. Another good example is like if you've seen an MRI or an image of someone's brain or um, like skeleton or something like that. That's kind of a sectional view. They take, they take a 3D object and slice it into 2D images so you can see that 2D profile. That, that is... Um, another example of a sectional view. So we're just going to take the parts that we're, we're uh, modeling on AutoCAD and we are going to create sectional views. So uh, before we get going, let's talk about our objectives as always. Chapter 26, sectional views. Uh, number one, be able to use the hatch command. That's kind of the big focus of this chapter is how to use the hatch command. Number two, know how to define a boundary for your hatch. Number three, know how to create annotative hatch patterns. Number four, be able to use the minus hatch, minus hatch tool. Number five, be able to drag and drop hatch patterns from a tool palette. Number six, know how to use hatch edit command. Number seven, be able to edit hatched areas using the trim, grips, selection options, and draw order. And number eight, know how to draw a cutting plane line for a sectional view. Uh, that cutting plane line is, is very important. That shows you where your, your section is going to be cut out. But, so uh, let's do our definitions. A section view is a view of the interior of an object after it's been imaginarily cut open to reveal the object's inner details. That the, the definition has a good point here. This is a sectional view is, is an imaginary slice cut out of something. We're not actually cutting the part in two. We're just showing what it would look like if we did. Uh, it's typically one uh, of two or more views of a multi-view drawing which describe the object. So remember, a multi-view is the front view, top view, and right view, and sometimes an isometric. So we're just going to take one of those and replace it with a sectional view. And how do you know it's a sectional view? Well, you know it's a sectional view because it'll have hatch lines, uh, also known as section lines. They're drawn in the section view to indicate where the solid material has been cut through. Each combination of section lines is called a hatch pattern. There's a whole lot of different patterns. And each pattern is used to represent a specific material. Okay. So with that being said, let's dive right in. Um, let me just show you first what that hatch is. So I'm going to draw just a couple of geometries here. Um, I don't know, something like that, right? And I can use this hatch tool, H-A-T-C-H, -H, like a an egg hatches, right? And I can choose uh, any of these internal boundaries to apply a hatch pattern to, right? That's a hatch. And notice up here you've got like a ton of different hatches you can choose from. Uh, you got squares, honeycomb, bricks, lines, double lines, all kinds of like um, gradients. You can put grass, right? There's a little grass to show where the grass is. You can do like hound's tooth. Um, and then there's there's ANSI like standards, um, triangles. You can create your own, which is kind of cool. Um, and then there's some that, that represent different things. So like this represents sand. If you were drawing, I don't know, a park and you wanted to show where the sandbox is, you could put sand there. Uh, this is cork. Uh, there's one for steel. Where is steel? That's an important one. Steel, yeah, this represents steel, like metal that you're cutting through. So that's hatch. And then, uh, of course, you can you can change all these. You got properties up here. Um, 
you can change all the different patterns. You can make it a solid, a gradient. We'll get into all that here in just a little bit. And then your boundaries, you actually have a lot of uh, options for how to select and uh, orient your boundaries. We'll get into that here in just a little bit. So that's what a hatch is. Um, so let's let's look at, um, I don't know, let's look at the old pivot arm. You, you probably remember this. You've done this exercise. This is a multi-view representation of the pivot arm, right? So what would happen, um, what would happen if we took and let's let's draw a line through here, through this top view, um, like 180 at zero, right? And let me take this line, let's make it kind of, let's make it, I don't know, yellow. No, let's not make it yellow. Let's make it blue. There you go, you can see that line there, hopefully. There, so imagine if we took this, this little uh, pivot arm, and we sliced it in two right here. We sliced it in two. And then um, you'll notice that on a, on a section view line, there's these little things here uh, that, let's see here, that represent which way you're looking. So usually it's like an arrowhead drawn down and it'll have an arrowhead on it that points this way. That's your, that's your line of sight, right? That's your cutting plane line. Um, and what would this look like if this was our section view? Where would you actually be cutting through material and where would you not? And let's, let's just kind of go through this. I'm going to change these lines here to, um, to just regular continuous can. And I'll show you why I'm doing that here in just a moment. Make that continuous. Good. Okay. And likewise with these. Make these continuous. Good. Okay. So I'm going to take the hatch tool and I'm going to decide where I'm like cutting through material, right? Not up here, obviously, but down here. Um, and let's use, I don't like that. What do we want to use here? Hmm. Okay, so I had to use a user-defined hatch pattern. But let's say we're, we're cutting through this view, straight through the middle right here. Uh, where would you be cutting through material? Well, you'd be cutting through material here, right? Uh, as well as here and here. And let's see, that hole goes through there. So it would be there, 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 and there. All right, so this is, uh, it may take you a minute to realize what we're, what we're doing here, but if I slice this in half, right? Right here, you would be cutting through material, but in the middle, there's a hole that goes through. So you're technically not cutting through anything. That's just empty space. And then once again, we've got material here, and then we've got two holes, one that goes across and one that goes through. So this is a sectional view uh, of that top view, right? So those, those dashed lines represent everywhere where we kind of cut through the material. Picture this being made out of wood, right? And you take a big saw and cut through it, Everywhere that you would see marks left from the saw, that's where the hatch pattern goes. That's kind of how uh, that's kind of how a section view works. So a couple of things that you need um, some some more detail stuff here, right? If you intend to have text or dimensions in the area to be hatched, always add them before. Like if I was going to put text here, I don't want to do it afterwards. I want to do it before. So if I put text right here, I don't know five and then I start typing, right? It kind of sits on top of that hatch. It looks really nasty. So I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna get rid of that. And then I'll put my text here. Five, text, right? And then when I do my hatch, notice what happens. It kind of goes around the text for me. So that's handy. Um, 
you can leave that there. Okay, moving right along. Uh, quick note, all hatch patterns are created using the current line type. Therefore, the continuous line type should be set current when hatching to ensure the selected area is filled with the pattern as it appears in the image tile. So what does that mean? That means, uh, that means hatch. That means if you're going to use this stuff up here, right, in order for it to look like the image, your line type needs to be set as, uh, as the current, right? The current line type, or I'm sorry, not current, um, continuous, continuous, right? Continuous. Uh, otherwise, it'll change it up. Okay, properties. So there is a properties panel. I can right click this stuff, um, go to options, right? And there's all kinds of things you can do here. I can go to properties, right? I can edit all that stuff here, just like you're used to in the properties panel. And then when you go to hatch, you've got uh, a properties panel right here with all kinds of options you can use. Um, there, is, there is more than one type of uh, hatch pattern. You can use a pattern, you can use a gradient, and you can fill it solid. So what, what does a gradient look like? Well, a gradient, you can have, um, you can have three options here. So I could fill this with some kind of color, right? I know this isn't a section view, but you get the idea. I can change the colors, right? You can do all sorts of stuff. I can hatch, I can use a solid fill and fill it with a certain color, right? If I wanted to make this one green, I could do that. So you can, you can finally start adding some color to your drawing. Uh, the angle, the angle is the slant of the lines that make up your, your hatch pattern, your sectional view. If the angle is set to zero, that represents whatever angle is displayed in the pattern's image. So let's go hatch. Right. If my angle is set to zero, right now it's set to 45, but if it's set to zero, then this is going to appear just as it would. Right. See that? Okay. Moving along. Boundary objects. Uh, you have to select your boundaries, right? The hatch only belongs inside certain boundaries. Uh, using the select objects method, which is what I've been doing, you specify the boundary objects rather than let AutoCAD let uh, AutoCAD select the boundary. You have to select them one at a time. If you use select objects, you have to select the boundaries one at a time. One at a time. Um, selected objects must form a closed shape, so it has to be able to hold water. Uh, no large gaps, no overlaps, nothing like that. Uh, and then there's there's three options uh, for island detection. So island detection. Uh, inside your properties. So there's a lot of contained geometry here. If I go hatch, right, there's a lot of sections. So I could hatch here, I could hatch here, and not in the circle or inside the circle. Um, when you have those enclosed geometries, those are called islands. And there's three types. There's normal, outer, and ignore. The normal is the default. That's really all you need to know. Um, under certain circumstances, you would use the outer and the ignore function. I'll get into that later on. If you want more detail on that, uh, just uh, grab a book, check it out. Okay, we talked about gradient hatches. There's three options for gradients. Let's go hatch. There's three options for gradients. They are one color, two color, centered, and angle. One color, two color, centered, and angle. So you can see these things here. You can have one color, two colors centered or angle. Uh, okay, there is a special hatch. Um, there's a special hatch that allows you to draw without a boundary and it is minus hatch. Minus hatch, the negative sign then hatch. And if you go down here, you can actually draw a boundary, right? I'm not gonna do it now because it would take too long. You can draw a boundary put the hatch marks in it, and then remove the boundary. So only when using this tool can you have hatch marks without a boundary around them. And there's certain reasons you would want to do that, maybe putting grass or stone or steel on a layout or something like that. Um, yeah, that is uh, minus hatch, very special tool. Okay, tool palettes. Let's go tool palettes. Tool palettes is this little bar right here. Um, if you haven't seen this before, this is incredibly useful for a lot of different reasons. Like 
you've got these symbols that you can use here that are pre-programmed in for mechanical, civil, electrical. Like I could just put a hex nut right there. I don't have to draw it. Um, there's electrical symbols. These are kind of like pre-made blocks, right? We talked about blocks before. Uh, look, there is a there's a speed limit sign. Well, it doesn't want to work. Oh, look, here's a oh my goodness. There's a manhole cover. You get the idea. There's lots of pre-made stuff in here that you can use. Tool palettes. So how does this uh, play into what we're doing? Well, there's some pre-made uh, hatch patterns, like bricks and shades and colors and gradients. You can go to tool palettes and just grab one of these, right? And you can apply it to uh, a surface. By the way, this is a sectional view here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, okay. Uh, if you want to edit anything, the easiest thing to do is just right click on the tool in the tool palette and select properties. So I want to go here, properties, and I can change the name, the description. I can take a look at all of the parameters here. That's the easiest way to change your tool properties is just right click properties. Okay. Uh, hatch edit tool does exactly what you think it does. Hatch edit. I can select hatches, right? And then I can edit those. Uh, based on hatch edit, based on whatever I need to do, right? So uh, I can change all of the angle, the origin, the boundaries. Um, I can change the gradient if it's a gradient. That is the hatch edit tool, E-D-I-T, hatch edit. Uh, allows you to modify any existing hatch pattern in the drawing. Good. Uh, there is fill mode, fill mode. So let's say, I don't know, let's say I've got this efficiency apartment. And I want to fill in all of these gaps in the wall, right? Uh, I can do that using, there's the bell, fill mode, right? Fill mode. Um, if that's turned on, right, one, I can fill in all of these boundaries oh, oh, using a fill. This is just like using Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Paint. Now, here's a question. Can I fill this in? The answer is no. Why? Because it's not closed, right? That's not a closed boundary. So I would have to close that off, All right? Hopefully I'm on the same layer I'm doing a doing a poor job of this. But then I can fill that in, right? That's a closed boundary. So that's the fill mode. Um, and then finally, last but not least, drawing cutting plane lines. So here is, let's see. If you if you look right here, uh, this blue line. Let me make it a color that you can see. Make it. Yeah, we'll make this uh, we'll make this bright white. So this is a cutting plane line, um, and here it is drawn with dashes. You can draw it with dashed or with phantom lines. Either one works. And then you'll notice that it's got these little arrowheads on it. The arrowheads tell you after you cut this thing in half, imaginary cut it in half, which side are you going to look at, the top part or the bottom part? Well, the arrows are pointing to the top part, so that's what we're looking at right here. That's where the section views are. So how do you draw these cutting plane lines? Um, the easiest way is to um, to use a, a, a polyline, a P-line, and then you can vary the width with that uh, on the end with an arrow. So, uh, for example, let's let's go here. Let's draw this. I don't know, we'll use a dashed, we'll make it a little bit thicker, white, and then on the end of it, let's say, I wonder if I can match this. Yeah, there we go. And then at the end, we can do a polyline, right? Polyline, specify start point, right? Oh, it went to my midpoint. Anyway, this right here, is a polyline it's a polyline and then it's got a tapered thickness a tapered thickness like we learned about in one of the uh, previous chapters um, so to do that uh, make sure your line weight is, is 0.8 millimeters and then use a width of 0 0.02 or 0 0.03 times the drawing scale factor right so you can see this this polyline here how it stretches out right that's that's how you draw your your arrowheads. I've made a mess of this. Okay, good. That is section views. Um, so this is one of your exercises, and I'm about to wrap this video up. Uh, this is one of your exercises, and you are going to draw a section view of this saddle. 
Um, here's the question. Do you have to completely recreate this view right here to do the sectional view? The answer is no. You can use existing geometry and just apply hatches. Right now, if you're creating a multi-view from scratch, you can do it on a different layer, and it'll save you a whole lot of time. Uh, okay. I think that is it. Your exercises are one, two, and three. Uh, pretty basic stuff. As always, uh, take some time to, to read the book uh, before you take your quiz. If you have questions, feel free to email me. Let me know. We can go over this in class if you need to. And as always, thanks for watching.